So this video will be helpful for anyone taking Math D Paper 2 in this uh, May June session. So the idea here is that the question that we have right now will be very similar to the one that you will be having for your exam as well. So if you can understand how we approach doing these kind of questions, you will be able to do your questions perfectly for your exam. So with that being said, let's do this example from the paper May June 2020 of paper 22. Now here we have the table shows some values of y equal to 4x. So they will give you an equation. So here we have y equal to 4x. Now next step, part one, we have to complete the table. As you can see, there's two values missing here. So how do you find those two values? Pretty easy. We have a value of x. We have to find the corresponding value of, of y. So, so when x equal to 0, what is the value of y? We replace back in that equation. That will be 4 power 0. That should be 1. Okay. The next one, same uh, logic. So if x equal to 0 0.5, what is the value of y? That will be 4 power half. That should be 2. But of course, if you don't trust, you can always check half. That should be 2. So as you can see, easily you get your first mark for your question. Complete the table by using those values and find the values of y with that equation. Now for part 2, you have to draw the graph of y equal to 4 power x. So this one is very easy as well. We have these points, we have to plot them on the graph. So the first point is 0, 1, so pretty easy. 0, 1 will be right here, right? And then we have 0 0.52. So 0 0.5 will be here, 2 will be this one. Then we have 1, 4, so 1 is here, 4 will be 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, and then 1.58, so 1.58 should be here. And we have 2, 16, 16 will be right here. And then we have 2.5, 32, so 2.5, 32 should be here. And we have 3 will be 64, so 3 will be 64 should be somewhere over here. Okay, now after drawing all this, after plotting all the points, we have to join all the points by a smooth curve. Now for this one, you will have to use a pencil and try your best to make it as smooth as possible. So let me uh, give it a try. So this will connect with this. Okay. And uh, moving on to those points. Okay. Just try your best to make it as smooth as possible. So as you can see, this will be my graph according to my table of values for the values of x between 0 and 3. Now finally, you have to label the graph as y equal to 4 power x, right? That is my graph. Okay, that is your question part 2. You get your, I think it is, 3 marks. Easy 3 marks. Now for part 3, here we have, by drawing a tangent, we have to estimate, right, the gradient of the curve on x equal to 2. Now first thing, let's find where is that point. It is right here. It is this point. Now, we are trying to draw a tangent at the point. So how do you draw a tangent? A tangent is a straight line, so that's the first thing, which will touches the curve at only this point. So we have to try our best to draw a straight line. You have to use a ruler, obviously. Well, I still don't have one. I will try with this, I guess. So you have to make it touch that point as closely as possible. As you can see here, I will have a straight line touching that point. So that will be my tangent to my graph. So, and how do you find the gradient? So since we have the line already, we need to find two points on the line and then to find the gradient. So one by one, let's choose two points that make it easy for you. So on my line, I can choose this one. That will be 1.5 and then 5, right? And then I can choose this one. That will be 3 and then that will be 38. So I chose two points that make it that we can use or to find the uh, gradient. So how do you find gradient? We can use the formula, obviously. 
so gradient it is y2 so y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 okay 38 minus 5 divided by 3 minus 1.5 that will be 22 so for me it shows to be 22 for my gradient it is only an estimate as you can see it is not an exact value so in the marking schemes there will be a, a margin of error they will accept or a range of answers they will accept for this uh, question it all depends on how well you draw this tangent so the idea is that the line will have to touch the uh, curve at exactly this point as you can see so that will be your question part three an easy two marks Now let's move on to part four. So I have been seeing this kind of question pretty often now, so I'm sure that you will get the same thing as well uh, for your exam. So let's see what do we have here. Now, the solutions to this equation, to that equation, can be found by the points of intersection. Now, whenever you see points of intersection, or you see uh, cuts, meets, you know something. It always leads to leads to what leads to simultaneous equation. So I think you have to keep that in your mind whenever you see this kind of indication. It will lead to simultaneous equation. So step by step, it is a point of intersection of this curve and this line. Okay. So part one, find the value of a and b on this equation. So since we are trying to find the point of intersection. We will have to solve these two equations simultaneously. This is my equation number one, equation number two. Here we have y as the subject, so replace here. You will have 4 power x is equal to 20x minus 12. Now next step, we have to send everything to one side. As you can see here, everything is on one side, so send everything to one side. That will be 4 power x minus uh, 20x and plus 12 have to be 0. So now we're not done yet because why? If you observe, here we have a 3. And here we don't have a 3, so what can we do? We have to multiply everyone by 3, so we can have a 3 here. You will have 3 multiply by 4 power x minus, that will be 60x plus 36 equal to 0. So now comparing the values, of this with my current current equation to find the value of a and b so very easy as you can see this is the same as this okay now next one we have x here here we have x so which means a has to be this value which is minus 60. the next one here we have 36 which means that b has to be 36. so usually I'm pretty confident every time you will have, not every time, but usually you will have to solve a simultaneous equation for your upcoming test. I think it will be something like that too. So always remember whenever you see points of intersection, curves or means, it will always lead up to some kind of simultaneous equation. Now for part B, by drawing the line y equal to 20x minus 12, we have to find the solution of this. So pretty easy. So how do you draw a straight line? So this one is a very simple. As you know, to draw a straight line, we just need two points to join them, and then we can form the straight line, right? So we can take values. We know that the graph is defined for the values of x between the value of 0 and the value of 3. This is according to our table. x is between 0 and 3. Now, we have the equation right here. We can choose the values of x, for example. I can first take the value of x to be what? Let's take it to be 0. You have y will be 20 times 0 minus 12. That will be minus 12. However, this one is not very useful. Why? If you observe, it's because we don't have minus 12 here, so we cannot use the point. So let's move on to the next point. Let's choose the point x equal to 1. You will have y. That will be 20 minus 12, that will be 8. That will be 1, 8 will be my first point. The next one we can choose, is let's choose x equal to the value of 2. Why not? You will have y, that will be 40 minus 12. 40 minus 12 is 28. 
that will be 228. So now, now we can use those two points to draw this line. First point is 18, so 18. That is 1, 8 should be right here. And then we have the point 228. So 228 will be right here. So now try your best to connect them together by a straight line. So it's best to use, to use your ruler in this case. Uh, well, I don't have one, so I will try my best to join them with this. Okay, so this is my straight line. As always, don't always um, label the line, obviously. That will be y equal to 20x minus 12. That is my equation of the line. Now we have to, after drawing the line, we have to find all the solutions to this equation. Now, what is this equation? As we have seen previously, it is simply the intersection of the line and the curve. But hey, we have just drawn the line and the curve. So where do they intersect? So we have to look at this point and this point. So according to my graph, this is my first point, And this is my other point of intersection. So we just have to read up the values to find the answer. Right? Let's see what do we have here as the answer. So this will be, this is 0 0.5, that will be what? So 1 square. So here we have what? 1, 2, 10 square is 0 0.5. So 1 square will be 0 0.5 divided by 10 is this much. So now we have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So times 15, that will be. 0.75 right so the first value of x of the point of intersection will be x is equal to 0 0.75 that's the first value and then for the other point of intersection we have to read this off again same thing 10 square is 0 0.5 divided by 10 that will be 1 square is this much we count we have so we know this is uh, 2.5 right that'll be 1 2 3 4 so times 4 and then plus 2.5, right? That will be 2.7. So this is 2.7. So according to my graph, my x will be this, and then 2.70 is my other value. So this is part B done for three marks. Very easy, right? Now for part B, uh, we have what? So here is a sketch of a graph of a quadratic function. Okay, so we don't know the equation yet, but we can see the shape of the graph. Now something we know by observation, whenever the shape of your graph is like this, what can you tell? It is a maximum curve. And what can you tell about maximum curve is that the coefficient of x squared has to be, so a has to be negative. That's something we know when we have a maximum curve. But either way, let's see what else can we find here. So it says the curve has a maximum point PQ. This is the point PQ. So basically, P is the X value here. And Q is the Y value. Right. Now, we have to use that information to find the value of P and the value of Q. So very easy. To find the value of P, it's pretty obvious. Why? Because we know that this, is, this curve is a maximum curve and it should be symmetric according to what we can see as well it should be symmetric about its maximum point so if you do this what can you do you can tell that this distance have to be the same as this distance so P right here is the midpoint of this and this now what is this whole distance it is 4 minus here we have minus 2 that will be 6. So this whole thing is 6. Divide by 2 to the midpoint, that should be the value of, of 3. So we count from here, move 3. So minus 2, minus 1, 0. So basically minus 2, we move 3 to the right. Basically it's minus 2 plus 3. That should give you the value of 1. So that's one way of finding that. We know P has to be 1 according to this diagram. So let's do that. P is 1. Now to find the value of Q, we have to have a look at the equation of that curve. 
Now it's very easy to find the equation of a curve y, as we have seen in many uh, times in ad math, that whenever you have these points on the x-axis, we know this is the solution when y equal to zero, right? So we can see this is what this is, x equal to four, and this is x equal to minus two. Now if this is a solution, how do you find the factors? We have to send this to the right, send this to the right. So the function, let's call this f of x, we can conclude that it will be, the first one is x plus two multiplied by x minus four. That's the first step. Now to find the equation, we have to expand. That will become x squared uh, minus four x then we have plus 2x minus 8. Then simplify. That will be x squared minus 2x and minus 8. So that is my equation of f of x. Now, as you can see here, we have seen that this is 1. This is positive 1, which will not be possible. Because if it was positive, the shape of the curve will be a minimum curve. However, here we have a maximum curve. So we have to multiply everything by minus one, so times minus one, because we want the right shape of the curve, right? So let's do that. It will be, f of x will be what? It will be minus x squared minus two x minus eight. So this will be my equation of, sorry, so here we have to change as well, plus and plus, not minus. That will be the equation of that uh, graph. Now to find the point, uh, Q, as you can see, for the point Q, we know the value of P has to be one. So P is, is the X value, as you can see. The point is PQ, right? We have seen P is one, we have to find Q. This is my X value, we have to find the corresponding Y value. So basically, replace the value of X by one, we should find that, so here you go. That will be what? So F of one, that will be minus one square plus two x, x is one, sorry, plus eight. That will give you minus one, if that makes sense, plus two plus eight. And that will give you minus one plus 10, and that should be nine. So q will be the value of nine. So that is one way of doing that question, as you can see uh, by observation and by some calculation. But this part of the question is not very often. It may or may not come to your exam, but however, for this one, you can almost be sure that you will have something like this, where you have to solve a simultaneous equation to show something, and then finally, by drawing another line on your graph, you have to find the point of intersection and read the corresponding value of x from your graph. So. This is the question seven. I hope that was helpful. If you guys need other questions on graphs, comment below and let me know which questions you want me to attempt again or to show you step by step. I will be able to help you with that. So now with that being said, thank you for watching. I will see you soon.